There are 14 big tents on the Oktoberfest, excluding the Eudivisen, and I will introduce them all to you. Generally speaking, you can say that every Oktoberfest beer is good. There are personal preferences. Some beers are more hoppy, others are sweeter, but all are very, very drinkable. And basically, the best place, the best table is the one you are sitting at, especially on very busy days at the Oktoberfest. But if you have the choice, there are small nuances between the tents, and I explain them all from the north to the south. The first tent is the Marstall. It is reminiscent of the tradition when there used to be horse races at the Oktoberfest. Today, the Marstall is the meeting point for all kinds of celebrities. Absolute A-list celebrities like Arnold Schwarzenegger, then there are celebrities that are known only in Germany, and celebrities that nobody knows. The Champagne Bar is also an indication that the venue is aimed at an upmarket audience. And before I forget it, you'll find all the links to the tents in the description. The Fischer Froni is located directly opposite. As the name suggests, everything here revolves around fish. And anyone who likes fish should definitely try a Steckerfisch, a fish grilled on a stick. The Fischer Froni serves Augustina, that's always beer from a wooden barrel. I will go into more detail about this in the Augustina tent. The Fischer Froni is also very popular in the LGBTIQ scene. The so-called Prosecco Wiesen always takes place there on the second Monday of Oktoberfest. There are certain events specifically for LGBTIQ scene at the Oktoberfest. However, the following applies to the Oktoberfest in every tent. Whether gay, lesbian or otherwise queer, everyone is welcome, even non-drinkers. The Armbrustschützenzelt crossbow tent is reminiscent of another tradition. In the past, shooting championships were held on the Theresienwiese. These were integrated into the Oktoberfest. Even today, the German crossbow championships are held on a shooting range in the tent. Unfortunately, the shooting range is not open to the public. And a word about the production. I started filming around 10 am on a weekday, so that I could get into all the tents. You see, the tents get fuller and fuller in this video, so if you don't have a reservation, you should try to get a place at the stage between 10 and 11 am. Then, of course, you should drink tactically, so that you can still enjoy the party in the evening. The next tent is the Ochsenbraterei. The name says it all, a whole ox is roasted here, or 100 over the entire 16 days of the Oktoberfest. Today, the ox Alois is roasting, an animal weighing 900 kilograms or 2000 American pounds. A roast ox with red wine sauce and potato salad costs 24 euro 90 cent, but you can also order the ox filet, which costs 45 euro and 50 cent. As the saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. The largest Oktoberfest tent is the Hofbrauhaus tent. When many other tents have already closed due to overcrowding, the Hofbräu tent is sometimes still open. This is also because it's the only tent with bar tables. Many tourists end up here, playing drinking games with funnels and hoses. A Munich resident would never do that, because you don't play with food. Of course, the Hofbräuhaus mascot Alois is also present, but I'll have to tell the legend of the drinking mailman another time. The Hacker tent shines with a beautiful panorama of the city of Munich. It has become one of the most popular tents and is therefore often the first to close due to overcrowding. It is advertised as the heaven of the Bavarian. When you see the interior, you know why. And it has become more and more popular among young people. The Augustina tent, on the other hand, is more for traditionalists. And when I say that, you have to take it with a grain of salt. The band in the Agostina plays many Bavarian classics and polkas. Towards the evening, however, it picks up just as much with party hits. And bands in so-called party tents also tend to play Bavarian classics at lunchtime. But what distinguishes Augustina tents from all the other tents? Wooden 200 liter barrels, Hirschen, are still tapped here. While other tents all use steel containers for their beer. The barrels you see in other tents are just decoration. And because I keep talking about how to get into a tent, the beer garden in front of the tents is a great alternative. 
especially when the weather is nice and sometimes it's even the better solution if you don't feel like partying or if you just want to have lunch with the family. The next tent is arguably the most important one. Why is it the most important one? Because here the first barrel is tapped by the mayor of Munich. And did I tell you to subscribe that I would be there next year? Well, anyway, the Schottenhammel has its name from the family Schottenhammel. But since Schotte means Scotsman in German and Hammel means mutton, there's a mutton with a plaid hat as emblem. What the hell was that? They've gone to plaid! The Schottenhammel is also important because in 1872 the landlord ran out of normal summer beer and had to serve the stronger Merzenbier as a result. After initial protest, it became two days Oktoberfest beer. And another little anecdote. In 1908, the Schottenhammel became the first electrified Oktoberfest tent. Back then, a 17-year-old Albert Einstein helped with the wiring. Today the Schottenhammer is considered a party tent and is still popular among young people. And that's the corner where I had wild Oktoberfest parties in my younger years. And speaking of me, of course I went to the Oktoberfest in my typical Munich Tracht, a Stoderer der Dortgedracht. A city dweller doesn't wear a traditional costume. Next stop is the Breurusel. The Breurusel is once again a fixed meeting point for the LGBTQ scene I was here on Rosel Montag, the day after Gay Sunday, and maybe that's why the rainbow flag was hanging here, or maybe it always hangs here. Correct me in the comments. But whether you're gay or not, everyone is welcome at the Breurusel, and the beautiful covered outdoor balcony invites you to stay in on warm autumn evenings. The Paulana tent is very close by. In addition to cold Paulana Oktoberfest beer, it also serves Germany's most popular soft drink, Paulana Spezi. I told you, non-beer drinkers are also welcome at the Oktoberfest. Of course, they also have a warm kitchen, like all festival tents. Opposite the Paulana tent is the Löwenbräu tent. It was my favorite tent as a child. Not because I spent even a minute in it, but because of that. <laughs> It's not my tent today either, but apparently the tent is very popular with many Italians and they create a good atmosphere. And because the tent was the first to switch to LED, it has won many environmental awards. Next to the Bavaria statue, you'll find the Schützenfest set, the tent for the marksman. This tent refers to the tradition of marksmen as well. There's also a shooting range here, apparently you can actually shoot an air rifle and air pistol here but only if you haven't drunk any alcohol beforehand. Alcohol and weapons are not a good combination. Anyone who knows more about this should leave a comment. And if you're wondering why the tent is so beautifully decorated, it doesn't always look quite so nice. The day I was filming was Regine's Sixth Ladies Day, the owner of the Sixth Car Rental Company. Once a year she invites successful women from all fields to the Oktoberfest. In recent years, the Schützenfest tent has become a popular party tent, and I know many people whose favorite tent it is. If you don't like beer but prefer wine, Kufla's wine tent might be something for you. Wine has been available at the Oktoberfest for a long time. The atmosphere is a little bit more dignified to match the drink, but by no means bad, as the wine tent doesn't close at 11 pm like the beer tents, but only at 1 am. It is the place to go for many who want to continue partying. However, the bouncers are strict. If you are too drunk, you have no chance of getting in. And the last tent is the Käfer tent. This is where the Who is Who of Munich meets and FC Bayern celebrates here once a year. More exuberant after victories, only mineral water is served after defeats. It's the only tent where I wasn't able to take any photos inside, because it was already closed due to overcrowding. But I'm not part of the chic society and I have no business being there. So these were all the big tents at the Oktoberfest. But before I leave you, I give you a few tips on how to behave. If you're in a tent and it's closed, don't leave the tent. You won't be able to get back. 
use the toilets in the tent. Because what is the excuse security hears most often? I have to go into the tent, they are all my friends. Even if it's true, nobody will believe you. Second advice, don't get on the tables. You are only allowed to stand on the benches. You'll be kicked out sooner than you think. Third advice, don't steal the glasses. They will catch you and you'll have to pay a hefty fine. Fourth advice, never ever sit or lay on the Kotzügel, the puke hill. It's a little hill behind the tents. I took these pictures on the first day and maybe it is still acceptable to sit there. But in the evening, this hill is soaked with all bodily fluids you can imagine. Vomit, white, yellow, red and brown fluids. This is the hill of shame. Avoid it. Fifth and last advice. The Oktoberfest with its 6 to 7 million visitors is a relatively safe festival. However, when so many people come together under the influence of alcohol, there are naturally also problems. If you get into trouble, go behind the Schottenhammel tent. There you will find the Oktoberfest police and paramedics if you are injured. And for the ladies, in recent years the city of Munich has done a lot to increase the safety of women as well. You will also find awareness teams there if you feel harassed. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment to tell me what your favorite tent is or simply tell me about your experiences. If you're interested in a guided tour, here's my email address. See you in the next video.